Kama, 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 Kama Chameleon from Culture Club there. And we're playing that because there is a direct link between that song and my next guests. Scottish Soul and Blues band The Vintage Explosion haven't yet released their first studio album. That's due in a couple of weeks. Uh, but they've already got quite the following. They went viral on TikTok uh, back in the autumn. And one of the people who discovered the band as a result was a certain Sir Rod Stewart who praised singer Will Hitchell's vocals. Uh, from there, they went on to play our very own BBC Big Birthday Bash, also ITV's This Morning. And they seem to have a talent for picking up influential fans and collaborators. After a chance meeting in a London pub, they asked harmonica player Judd Lander to perform on their new single. And we, well, I've got Will and Judd both on the line. So let's get the story direct from them. Will Hitchell, Judd Lander, welcome to the afternoon show. Hi there. Good afternoon. Hello there. Good to have Hi. you both on. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with you, Will. Before we get on to you meeting Judd and, and listening to the new single, which we've got uh, queued up ready to go, it has been a, a bit of a whirlwind for the past few months for the Vintage Explosion. Um, feet touched the ground yet? Not yet, no. I'm still very much <laughs> flying high in the air, <laughs> um, taking every opportunity that comes. <laughs> isn't, isn't that amazing, the power of social media like that? It is. I mean, it was completely random as well. It wasn't planned. I, I didn't um, realise... Um, how quickly things could take off on TikTok. It was literally my first post uh, on the platform. I thought um, I needed some more gigs so I should uh, join the kids on TikTok and stick a video out. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and it had gone all the way around the world a couple of times. How so. quickly did you pick it up? Uh, straight away. It was oh, really? Unbelievable, yeah. Right, well... Um... We'll get to your new single, uh, Take My Troubles. We'll hear that shortly, but we need to get this story that involves uh, Judd. So, take us back, Will. You're, you're in a pub in London and you get chatting. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we'd performed on this morning, that morning, and we had a, a show at the 100 Club on Oxford Street later on that night. Uh, so we'd set up, uh, we'd finished it this morning, headed over to the 100 Club, set up there, and then just found a pub around the back of Oxford Street to get some proper London grub and a pint. <laughs> and uh, when we were there, there was a, a chap um, standing at the bar with someone else and overheard us chatting about music and um, interjected and we get chatting away and we were very friendly and I managed to drag him along, um, drag him along to the gig. So Judd, let's bring you in at this point. What was, is that, is that kind of how you remember it as well? Oh yeah, it was quite uh, quite bizarre. I was with a guy called Paul Charles, who manages Van Morrison of all people. Wow. We we were at the bar, and he just written a book. He was zooming off, and I was I was earwigging, listening to uh, Willie chatting with uh, he is with his producer Stuart McCready, a brilliant producer. Anyway, they're chatting away, and I. I just sort of cheekily sort of interrupted, and uh, and he he dragged me down to the gig, which I must admit was heaving. I've never seen a gig like it before, really heaving. So he, he sold me, and out of curiosity, then I started contacting Stuart, the producer, and asked him to send up some stuff. So Willie and he sent me a couple of tracks and I started messing about playing with one of the tracks on my little studio in the office. And I thought, you know, I'll bit of a wheeze, sent a clip up and then lo and behold, Willie then sort of starts doing a bit of research, <laughs> finds out that I've uh, got a bit of a checkered pack. <laughs> <laughs> Not off. <laughs> well, absolutely. Well, well, Will, when did, the, when did the sort of moment, when did the penny begin to drop when you went, hang on, this guy in the bar that we met the other night, do you know who he is and what he has done? When did that begin to, to drop Yeah, for you? it was once uh, Stuart, uh, our producer, he he'd told me that Judd had got in contact and, um, and he said, do you, do, you, do you actually know who this guy is? And I says, I've got, I've got no idea. I just thought he was a cool guy. Mm. <laughs> so I did a, bit, did a bit of Googling and he's got his full-blown full Wikipedia page with yes. <laughs> every single thing he's played on, which is obviously famously the, the harmonica part on Carmel Chameleon, yeah. but also um, played with Paul McCartney, the Beach Boys, and even a Spice Girls hit. Yes, it's, uh, see you'll be there. But you were yeah. also on Culture Club's uh, Church of the Poison Mind as well, uh, Judd. So, so tell us, uh, well, give us, uh, it's quite a history because I also did a bit of a deep dive into your career uh, last <laughs> <laughs> last night and it would take more than the two hours we have on this show to, to get through all. But, but just give us a, a sort of a, a sort of potted history of, of what you have done and, and you know, the, the kind of levels of, of where you've worked. Well, I don't know. I suppose I'm like the Arthur Daly of the music business because I've been all over the place. I worked on the Brits for 21 years as a floor director, and that was just a giggle job. But second work, I've worked with Nazareth. I played with Nazareth on their album Exercises years ago. Annie Lennox, Proclaimers, yeah. yes. 
Uh, a lot of Scots bands, uh, Bay City Rollers, wow. they flew me to New York in their heyday, and I've done a session there with Meatloaf next door to us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've got sort of a session musician. It, I was basically, I was in Liverpool. I'm now what you call a posh scouser. So I, I, you know, I've been up in London now for a long time, um, married uh, to a London girl. But I live with the Beatles road manager, Neil Aspinall, when I first went to London. And that's how I started getting a bit of session work, playing a bit of guitar, a bit of harmonica. And it was the Moosey that the was the thing that sort of um, yeah. uh, I, I seemed to excel on and get lots of uh, gigs, you know. So And Nazareth was... Uh, so their album was done in Trident Studio many years ago. And next to us was Jimmy Page and people like that. They were all session musicians. So primarily it was session work that sort of uh, took yeah. me through to uh, everything. I was I was thinking just before we started this, interview, maybe we'll get one of these little bells to ring every time you clang a name. But I think it would have burnt it out just to, just having that little chat with you. Uh, there are <laughs> all those amazing names that you've uh, you've dropped in. Let's just go back to that the Karma Chameleon. And again, I'd, on my research last night, uh, uh, Judd, I looked at the top of the pop's performance of, Car of Culture Club's Karma Chameleon. Was yeah. that you playing the mouth organ on the top of the pop's stage? Yeah, all the top of the pop's I did, but I was a little bit concerned because George kept on insisting I wore a dress. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not going there. I refuse. The only thing I would wear is a kilt because I ended up on top of the pop's yeah. with a John Farnham playing the bagpipes with him. <laughs> Um, you know, don't ask me about the bagpipes. I don't know where they came from, but I do play a mean <laughs> pipe. Do, do you um, have? Do you happen to carry the muthi with you? Do you have it with you just now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can can you still remember the camera chameleon solo? That's enough. That's yeah. enough. Okay. So, Will, I mean, the, as soon as you heard, and, 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 and as uh, Judd was saying there, he started mucking about with some, with some of your tracks. You must have think, oh, our, our luck is in here. Oh, definitely. I was sold already. Judd's just a great guy, and yeah. uh, he knows his stuff music-wise. Um, so I knew as soon as he sent us the tracks uh, with him playing on it, it just sounded great, and it would definitely work well on the, on the single. And, and, I, and I take it you've also spent a bit of time getting some of the stories as well. Oh yes, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, stop. Not for afternoon radio, though. <laughs> no, but I, I was listening to the tracks, and I'm now a, a little frustrated because once you lay a little line down, and I've done it as a bit of fun, you listen to it, and I'm thinking. Well, I could have done a, another opening. I could have done a bigger hindsight, such a wonderful thing. Yeah. So we could do the extended mix for the second <laughs> album. Okay? Yeah, that's a deal. That's a deal. <laughs> this, is, this is a collaboration that's going to run and run. Um, yeah. And I'm also thinking, uh, well, when you go out on the road again, you start playing live gigs, there's surely got to be an opportunity when, when Judd can come and join you on stage. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're all over the UK and Ireland um, between the now and next year. Um, well, everywhere Willie, from... Willie, Willie, I'm expensive. <laughs> no, I'm not. It, it might just well, be... Let, let's interject there because, Willie, the irony was about this bizarre meeting and, uh, you know, me not telling them who it was. I had... I was at Rod Stewart's place when Rod played the track. He said, have a listen to this. And he played the guy's tracks. And he said, listen to that vocal. It's the best vocal I've ever heard from a white man. He's referring to Willie. And it didn't wow. click. Until we actually met, so this, Rod played me the track so before you, Christmas. So you were with Rod Stewart, who got behind this TikTok video that Will made, featuring Will singing "A Change Is Going to Come," yeah. and then months later, you're standing behind each other inside a bar. Yeah, and, that's it. Yeah, very bizarre, and I didn't link it at all. And then it wasn't until I then started doing a bit of research on the guys after I'd met them, seen them at the gig, that I went, "Hang on." I remember Rod mentioning it's sort of name dropping again. I remember Rod I, I mentioned it over a cup of tea. And of course he's a mad Celtic fan. Yeah. Go into his uh into his sort of gym and you just see Celtic plastered all over the gym. So uh yeah, so um I, I was sold. And I mean Willie, you listen to his voice. Yeah. My goodness. America are waiting for you. They're going to be big in the States, definitely. It is, it is goosebumps. It, it really is. It's, it's an incredible voice, uh, Will. So tell us, we, we mentioned that your first studio album is just a couple of weeks away. Yes. Uh, tell us what we can expect from that. Well, um, we approached that in the same way as you would have done back in the 50s and 60s. I booked a studio before the album was written and 
which is what you would you hear Paul McCartney getting interviewed and talking about how they had they had Abbey Road booked um, two weeks later and they still didn't have the album and him and John would just lock themselves away and write mm -hmm. the album. So I took the same sort of approach. I, I booked uh, the studio with uh, Stuart McCready and um, I spent the, the, the following two weeks just battering away and writing the whole album uh, within the two weeks. I sent the guys in the band uh, the tracks um, one day before we went in the studio and we recorded it all live as you would have done back, back in the late 50s, early 60s. Unbelievable. And um, dare I ask if there's a vinyl pressing Yes, plan? there certainly is. It's yep. um, it's available for pre-order right now as you can get it on CD as well. Great. Um, it's going to be out on the 4th of August um, in line with our show at the Fruit Market in Glasgow. Right. I will, I will give it a play on my vinyl show on a Friday night as well. Perfect. I'll so make sure you get a copy. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Well, we're going to play Take My Troubles Away very shortly. But but Judd, uh, just, just finally, is this the beginning of a beautiful friendship between you and the band? Well, it is now. I'm like the salesman. I'm seeing Paul McCartney, another name drop, um, <laughs> next week. So I'm going to mention to Paul about uh, the guys because he loves good music and uh, he's a great ambassador as well. So uh, I wish them well there. I, I think with all the streaming and Spotify and everything, you know, in the old days, you know, will you be a millionaire now? <laughs> I know. But nowadays, as you know... As you know, Spotify, well, I'm not going there, but anyway, that's a, another story. Right, but, we'll, uh, so buy the album, buy the album, yeah, guy. Definitely, yeah. I'll, I'll be playing it. And Will, final final word to you. There you are. Judd, your, your new best friend is going to drop your name in front of Paul McCartney. Uh, well, that's a revelation to me, and that would be the best thing in the world. I love Paul McCartney. Well, <laughs> and everybody likes a good bit of old rock and roll. Absolutely. You know what I mean, so. Well, I tell you what, you must keep uh, keep us in touch, and uh, I'm going to follow this this career with okay. with great thank interest you. now. Uh, Judd, a great great man to have on the show. Will, thank you so much for taking Thanks the so time. Thanks so much, Grant. Thanks for having us. Uh, great to have you both. Oh, thank you. Excellent. So many stories. I'm sure you will agree. Next time uh, I'm down in London, I'm going to uh, <laughs> hunt Judd down as well. So let's hear it then. Let the new single from the Vintage Explosion featuring uh, the great Judd Lander on harmonica. This is Take My Troubles Away. <laughs> 